Welcome. I see you there. You've come to see your loved ones again, haven't you? That's what brings you to my realm. Well, I shouldn't say my realm, should I? Seeing as they don't appear to listen to anything that I tell them to. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. My, my, you have got a lot to learn. Please, come closer. I won't bite. I'm here to help you in your way. You see, I help others along their way. I know, by the look on your face, I obviously don't need to explain how much of a bore this job is. I'm sorry, I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Alexander. I'm a watcher. My job is to watch people and the horrific offence that they call a life, which I promptly catalogue and, at a certain appointed time, must lead a victim through their past terrors to teach them a lesson. You're not in hell. You're somewhere much worse. At least life in hell is simple. Torture, agony, blood and tears. However, here you are not dead, nor are you to be tortured. But if you misbehave and don't do exactly as I say, I can't help but only watch while the wisps which stalk these paths take you for their sport. Your job is simple. You walk down this alleyway of horrors, and every once in a while you will come across almost a tale, or at least a memory, of an unfortunate victim of one of my colleagues. Doesn't sound that bad, does it? Remember, you're blessed to be in my company. No spell or incantation has brought you here. I chose you. Sleep is a precious thing. Don't waste it on wide-mouthed killers and ghouls wearing three-piece suits. The time has literally come to test your nerve. If you feel my friends will take you off my hands. You've actually brought yourself here, being terrified of almost anything. Reading all those stories and tales sourced from a child's mind and phobias, being inhabited by the life itself. You look up into the night sky and tremble with fear that by some rejection of physics, you'll find yourself floating into the darkness and solitude of the stars. So be bold and brave, and may you survive the path I have set for you. Now, let me tell you a story. I heard this story once. I thought the story was pretty crazy, but I don't think so anymore. There was this app called Watcher, and it was basically one of those video apps like Vine or something. It was one of those crappy generic apps you'd find in an app store. It never became popular or anything. A few people used it, and then discarded it, and stuck to the popular ones. The weird thing was that I knew a few people that used the app. And they all said when they used the app and later on replayed the videos, they noticed something really weird in all of the videos. In each video, there was some kind of figure standing in the background. At first, I assumed it had been someone accidentally caught in the video. But all of my friends insisted they were either alone or they had accounted for everyone that could have been in the video. The figure in the video was always slightly off camera. You couldn't make out the figure all the way. It looked like a blur, so most people assumed it was a terrible photobomb, but a friend of mine that had a video editing program actually took the footage and was able to make out the figure in the background. He said it looked like an old, beat up metal mannequin in a parka. It had no eyes, and its head was scratched up and covered in rust. But my friend said he took the footage of several people he knew who had used the app and had reported the same anomaly, and said he found the thing in all the videos. This white, eyeless face with rust and scratches all over it in a parka. So, I did a little digging into the app itself. I didn't turn up much about it, but I did turn up an interesting story. It seems the creator of the app was some kind of creep. Whenever users would sign up for the app, he would use their personal data to stalk them. There were at least six girls who reported him stalking them. Apparently, the guy died in some freak accident. 
like a car accident or something. Obviously, the app was discontinued after rumours started circulating that the developer used the app to stalk people. A girlfriend of mine told me something after she deleted the app, though. She said that whenever she took selfies or photos of herself, she continued to see the figure in the background of all the images. She would take the photos and videos using different apps, like Instagram and stuff too. She started getting really paranoid, and she texted me one night and said she was laying in bed, and she was afraid to look over into her closet, because it was standing inside. I told her to turn on all the lights in the house, and sleep with all the lights on, but she said she was too scared to move. She continued on like this for a few months. She said sometimes she would hear something scuffling around under her bed, and she was certain it was that thing, but she would never get up and confirm it. When she went to the police and said she was being stalked, and that someone had been breaking into her house, they couldn't confirm anything. There were no signs of illegal entry into her house. A friend of ours said with her one night, and he insisted nothing happened all night, but she said the thing was there that night too. I couldn't tell what was going on. Has she gone crazy? We haven't heard from her in over six months. Her parents put out all these flyers and got on TV and everything, but nothing. Her bank account had money in it, so she hadn't used any money, and her car was still parked at her apartment complex. She hadn't packed anything, and everything in her house was like she had never left. The police looked through her cell phone and said they saw all the pictures with the figure in them, but they couldn't make out what the figure was. How, if at all, the figure had gotten into her house, or how the figure had taken her. Everyone assumed foul play though. I was looking through my cell phone yesterday, and I noticed the figure in the background of my selfies and videos. When I was young, my mum would make us go to church every single Sunday without fail. It was a small, tight-knit community with a simple white building that filled only half of the 20 pews. We knew everybody's names and faces. I went to school with all of the kids, and whenever someone had a party or a wedding of some sort, it was common courtesy to invite members of the church. So, whenever there was a newcomer, our minister would make a note of it. That's why the chapel man was so strange. One day, when I was about seven years old, I noticed a man in the back of the pews. He was obviously aged, but what stuck out most was his eyes. Large and dark, almost black. So you could never tell what he was looking at. His skin was white and looked like crumpled paper. He scared the crap out of me. I would constantly think about him during the services, wondering why he decided to show up and what his story was. He wasn't so strange in himself though, as much as it was that no one stopped to welcome him or shake his hand or even ask who his family was. Even the minister didn't introduce him, which struck me as rude. Being the polite little Baptist girl I was, at the end of the service I went up and mentioned to the minister the man in the last pew. He laughed and said it must have been someone's grandfather, as he searched for him exiting the crowd. He muttered that he didn't notice the man and said that he would talk to the man next time he came. The minister probably said this more to appease me because he never did talk to the man. The third time I saw him, he still had the same far away look on his face. Only I felt as if he was looking directly at me. I decided, mustering all the courage I had, to talk to him. But every time I tried, he was gone. I couldn't explain the appearance of the man and when I tried, I was burst off as if he was a guest that was simply overlooked. But he wasn't, because he came almost every week. He brought a strange feeling to the room. I never saw him exit or enter, but he was always unfeelingly there. One day, about a year after the man appeared, I told my mum I'd be sitting separately from the family. She looked at me strangely, as I explained to her I'd be sitting next to the man in the last pew though she shrugged and allowed it. When I sat down next to the man, even as a young girl, I felt a disturbing radiation. His skin 
dangled to his neck, and he took no notice of me for most of the minister's service. I took quick glances at the man, mostly out of an awkward discomfort. It's strange to think about these things now as we grow older, to reflect on these childhood experiences and see a glitch that wasn't there before, like a light in an old photograph. As I was recalling these events, I decided to call my mother and ask her about the man in the last row to see if she remembered anything about him. She had the strangest response. You were so imaginative as a kid. He was probably just a visitor. I asked her again about the man I sat with on that third day. I do recall that. He was just an imaginary friend. It wouldn't be unusual for you, seeing as you mentioned pretend people a lot. Then, I flooded back at once. At church was not the only time I saw him. It was hundreds of times in different forms. As a woman on the subway with bottles and cans. As a child playing across the street from my house. The people I mentioned to my mother a lot in passing, but faded away as I grew older. The people no one else saw. A shadow of a person once there. As children, we are prone to pretend friends. But why would we need them? What if everyone we saw that the rest of the world didn't, was just the residue of a previous life. That, as new as we are, we have this remarkable gift of seeing the old in a world so new. I remember Sarah, who lived under the floorboards. Angel, who only my younger neighbour could see. People wandering, watching over us, and showing themselves to a seldom few, taking up space in a world that refuses to acknowledge them. It was getting dark fast. I needed to get home soon. Otherwise I would be stuck travelling the back roads by the light of a quarter moon. I quickened my pace in an effort to make it in time. I wasn't going fast enough. The little light I had left was now nearly gone. As I turned the corner going into the subdivision where I live, the sun left the sky completely and handed its shift over to the moon. Now I was forced to slow down. I could see almost nothing and I needed to let my eyes adjust to the darkness. I was scared already, but what I saw about 30 feet in front of me was the start to a nightmare I could never have even imagined. Standing in the middle of the road was what looked like a man staring straight at the ground. Once I got closer, I discovered the man had almost nothing in common with me. He wasn't wearing clothes, but that wasn't the strange part. It appeared he was made of sticks. Not sloppily, with three or four sticks, but what looked to be hundreds upon thousands of sticks carefully placed with no gaps between them. I was still about ten feet away from him when he revealed his final deformity. He slowly lifted his head to show a featureless face. The only human-like feature was too oval-shaped and dense where I should be. Him, being in the middle of the only road room, forced me to walk right by him. I wasn't any more scared than I had been before. Just curious. I continued walking towards him, his only sign of interest being that his head would follow me. Even though he had no eyes it appeared, he still was capable of sight. It was time to pass him. I kept an eye on him to see what he would do as I briskly strode past him. Fortunately, he didn't take one step. He just shifted his body to keep watching me. I sighed with relief and kept going. I looked forward again and stopped dead in my tracks. There there were more of them. This time there were three of them standing in a driveway on the right. A little girl, a man and a woman. I could tell they were not men because they were wearing dresses, but being made of six, they didn't flow. The dresses were rigid, reminding me of the woman that symbolises women's restrooms. I kept walking towards them, my eyes locked with the man's as he and his family watched me pass. Once I had gone past them, I looked forward. They were everywhere, in driveways, standing in the road, and walking up and down the street. Some of them ignored me, but some of them took interest and watched me walk. I chose one in particular to look at. It was a little girl, no larger than three feet tall, skipping towards me. 
I stopped and watched as she skipped right past me and disappeared into the night. I breathed a sigh of relief, as that confirmed they were not in fact hostile. With a newfound confidence, I briefly strode down the road, ignoring them. Finally, I arrived at my house as I strode down the driveway. I noticed that there was one stickman standing directly in front of the door. As I approached him, I could see that this one was different. He was different in a way that both disturbed and intrigued me. He had a mouth and a lump on either side of his head that looked to be a crude of ear. Now I was face to face with him, and he wasn't moving. I started to push him aside when his arm shot out at his side, blocking my path. In a moment of frustration, I yelled, What do you want from me? Strangely enough, he replied, in a raspy voice that sounded like it had only been used once before, he said, Nothing. Just to watch. To wait. I gasped and stepped back. He continued, But now, it is time for another watcher to join us. We are here to escort her. He then turned around, opened my door and walked in. Cautiously, I followed him. The watcher walked through my unlit house, like he lived there. As they silently descended the stairs to my daughter's room, I began to become worried. The door at the bottom of the stairs opened with a loud, long creak, and he walked through it, trailing behind him. I stood in the doorframe as I watched him pick up my seven-year-old daughter Jessie from her bed. What, what you want from her? I stuttered. It is her time, was the only reply I got. As he walked towards me, Jessie in his arms, I saw a change in her. She was no longer completely human. I could see that she was turning into one of them, starting at the extremities and moving to her heart and head. Her ears, nose and eyes were slowly becoming lumps on her face. Maybe it was because of fear. Maybe I knew I couldn't stop him. But for whatever reason, I let the watcher walk right out of my house with her. I stood there, afraid and confused, as the monster purposely walked out of my house with my daughter. I decided to follow him. He was already outside, so I sped up the stairs and into the driveway. Once my eyes adjusted, I could see there were two lines of watchers on either side of my door, leading all the way to the forest on the opposite side of the road. There being only one way to go, I walked on the funnel the watchers had created and slowly cut off to my daughter's taker. As we reached the forest, I realised it was too dense to continue after him. Right as he was about to disappear into the woods, I quietly said, Why her? The watcher stopped dead in his tracks and gave me an eerily simple response. She was alone and disappeared into the black forest. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment below. All feedback, good or otherwise, is always appreciated. If you have any creepy stories of your own or have any topics that you would like me to cover, feel free to send them in via any of my social media. You can find all links to my social media in the description below. Until next time guys, make sure you lock your doors, stay safe and I'll see you next video.